Hi young friends and curious learners. Nelson Mandela said, The greatest glory in living lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Today we are about to explore the deep realms of fear as experienced and fought well and surmounted by William O. Douglas. I am Mrs. A. Jyoti, a teacher of English with Kendra Vidyalaya Meenambakam, Chennai. So here we go ahead with Deep Water, one of my personal favorites authored by William Douglas. Let's know about the author William O. Douglas. Douglas was born on 16th October 1898 in Minnesota. He was his mother's favorite and was lovingly called treasure. He was stricken by polio that proved to be fatal. As a child, he was very competitive by nature. Once he overheard his mother's concern about his weak legs, after which he began to run every day to strengthen his legs. This showed his determination. In 1922, he arrived at New York to attend Columbia Law School. After graduating in 1925, he began working in one of the most prestigious Wall Street firms. He taught at Yale. Douglas became the second youngest Supreme Court appointee in history. President Roosevelt appointed him as the Associate Justice of the Supreme Court. He served for 36 long years and retired in 1974. He passed away in the year 1980. Now let's look at the gist of this lesson. The author, when only a little boy, realized that water, which is a great source of joy, could also take away lives. His mother described the river Yakima to be treacherous and kept drawing his attention to the numerous instances of drowning. Once he was with his father on the California beach, he was standing on the beach when a wave suddenly drew him within and the totally unprepared Douglas lost his breath. His father merely laughed at him, but fear of death by drowning had taken a stronghold in the mind of Douglas. However, his love for water encouraged him to learn swimming. He chose to learn it on his own in the YMCA pool, which he thought was safe. Unfortunately, while he was all alone in the pool, a bully flung him into the deep end of the pool. Douglas was terrified underwater and almost died. This instance haunted him and he was unable to be normal again. He also could not enjoy life and realize that he was missing the great fun that life could open to him. So, he hired an instructor who trained him well with techniques and confidence. After several months of strenuous lessons, he dived into the lakes, rivers and even dived from cliffs. Only one sphere came up but he could now laugh at it. He knew, as Roosevelt had said, all one has to fear is fear itself. Let's find out more about the theme and the sub-theme this lesson discusses and elaborates. Theme. Experiencing fear and steps taken to overcome it. Sub-theme. Psychoanalysis of fear. The lines that bring out the themes are... The experience had a deep meaning for me as only those who have known stark terror and conquered it can appreciate. In death there is peace, there is terror only in the fear of death as Roosevelt knew when he said all we have to fear is fear itself. Psychoanalysis of fear is evident in the lines my introduction to the YMCA swimming pool revived unpleasant memories and stirred childish fears. It seemed a long way down, those 90 feet 
those nine feet were more like ninety. The terror that has seized me in the pool would come back. It would take possession of me completely. Personal experience of fear. Let's recollect his mother's words of caution, given with the best intention of protecting him. She pointed out at the newspaper headlines on the numerous instances of drowning. These descriptions remained in his memory until one day he felt in person the power of water at the California beach. This was in fact his first contact with fear. Later he was in the midst of a misadventure when he was thrown into the deep end of the YMCA pool. He almost died there. This was traumatic episode of his teenage life which had negatively impacted on his feeble body and fragile mind. Steps taken to overcome fear. Well, we come to understand that Douglas had fierce spirit and a strong will to face challenges of life. He could no longer live in fear. It was his love for water that encouraged him to take steps to learn swimming by mimicking others. Then when he realized that fear had handicapped him, he resolved to learn swimming the right way. He hired an instructor. When the instructor told him that he was ready, Douglas had to know it for himself. There were vestiges of fear in him. He wanted to awaken them and uproot them forever. Psychoanalysis of Fear Douglas knew that Yakima River was dangerous. When he was unexpectedly pulled into the surf at the California beach, he experienced the power of water and recognized the danger of dying when he lost his breath and gulped in water. He was frightened of death by drowning. Later, when he was flung into the deep end of the YMCA pool, he was in real danger. The magnitude of this danger compared to his own physical strength made him helpless. Even after several years, Douglas found the fear returning to him whenever he was around water. He became instantly aware of the danger that could that water could pose to him again. His anxiety heightened whenever he was reminded of his vulnerability. This was his trauma. Let's look at the vivid description of the panic experienced by Douglas in the YMCA pool. The evidences are both physical and psychological. The panic is seen in the desperate struggle he put up. Lungs were about to burst, flailed at the surface of water, swallowed and choked. Lungs ached, head throbbed, shrieked under water, shook and trembled with fear. Arms wouldn't move, legs wouldn't move. His mind began to magnify his fear. Psychological evidences are nine feet were more than ninety feet went down endlessly terror that knows no understanding no control no one can understand stark terror took deeper hold of me like a charge of electricity what lessons of life can we learn from the author's experience first fear is acquired our thoughts shape it and our weaknesses make it real and traumatic Secondly, f you may succumb to fear or choose to overcome it. Earlier the better. Where there is a will, there is a way. Finally, personal experience of overcoming fear makes you wise and sets you free to walk the trails and climb the peaks.